forward on this computer and we are recording hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to another episode of the lawn and garden section i'm christopher with midwest workshop and garden and i am jason with J youtube channel jason cyberlake i refer to it as our lawn it's a very good channel he also posts good things on facebook but only if you're friends tonight i'm drinking sparkling <laughs> water made by myself how about you jason uh, it is a, let's see, Costco Jameson with a splash of a watermelon whiskey and Sprite. Watermelon sounds so good. That's a spring summertime feeling if I ever had one. We have had some yeah. spectacular weather over the last two weeks since we last checked in with our YouTube community, haven't we? Just so much greening up. Yeah, it was wild. It was what, 78, 77, 76, 78, like the last three days, which is just unheard of mm -hmm. for April, whatever this in this these parts these here parts i think my i would say my garden is about 10 days ahead of where it is on a good year and i gauge that based off of how far my raspberries and my gooseberries have opened up where the buds are on my stone fruit trees etc cetera, etc cetera. and some things are just starting to creep open which gets me partially worried because i mean we might you know we, we're still going to have a little bit of frost um, not necessarily a snow downfall, if I had to guess. The last time we got a late April one this late was uh, 2018. I think it was April 15th. But uh, I think we should be otherwise in for, for an early spring. Good stuff. I know we're at least clear through the 14 day. There's no overnight. Like, I think the lowest low is 38 in the, like, 10, 14 day forecast. And, yeah, strawberries in the bed. Uh, in the one pretty good here. And obviously the yard has as well. Amazing. It's a good thing. Well, let's get into it. Um, but our topic for today is tools. We're talking about top tools. I've got five, several of them I brought down to show and talk about. Jason's going to talk about, about as many. We're going to bounce back and forth between each other. But before we do, let's address some of our comments from our last live stream. We had six of them, a couple of good stuff, great video, learned quite a bit. Those are nice, thanks. My wife sarcastically says, more accents, more discussion on dialects. Also, <laughs> thanks for the raspberries, Chris. You're welcome, my darling wife. I love you from my heart. Matt Wells says, thanks for addressing the raspberries. Sure to get in my order this week and follow along on Jason's lawn care program. Sounds like we both got a nice subscriber out of that. Or at least- it. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And, uh, and then somebody uh, talks, actually, asks questions to each of us this comes from ben jaworski who if it's the ben jaworski i'm thinking of is he was a skinny guy in orchestra maybe band i remember him like in concert attire with uh like dark facial hair nice guy and he yeah, that's neither here nor there right <laughs> sorry ben um <laughs> i hope you're still in in music in some form ben and you should let us know if you're still a skinny guy. All right, um, these are helpful, great info to get us in the right direction. One question, it's actually two questions. Uh, do you guys have any suggestions for dealing with shady areas? They're in Rockford, Illinois. Their front yard has uh, three 30 foot and more pine trees and lots of bare dirt. Any recommendation for grass seed? That's the first question, it goes to you. Grass seed underneath trees, even though trees are king, right? Yep, yeah, so the trees are going to win to some degree, I think the best thing you could do is you could do it now or if you wanted to wait till the fall or whenever you have an opportunity to to seed is go out, do that now, take a rake because underneath that tree, it's probably going to be, you know, all crusted over and rock hard. So take, you know, a, a metal tine garden rake and just rough it up. Or if you have one of those little weasels with the little tines that cross each other and go all shove right. that thing back and forth um, and seed. And then basically what you're going to do is you're going to water seed everywhere. And what you're going to do is you're going to water um, for like five, 10 minutes in the morning, um, around noon if it gets dry, and then in the evening again. And you're going to do that for about a week until it germinates, you know, gets got sun and shade, whatever. That'll have some rye and fescue that'll come up pretty quick. And then just watch that area under the trees. Wherever grass germinates and survives, there you have grass. There's going to be a line somewhere where that tree is just going to say no to grass. Throw in the towel there. It's not going to happen you know, cut in a live edge or put some bricks or stones or however you want to define that landscape bed and then mulch whatever doesn't grow in because you, you can't win the battle on, like directly underneath the tree. If there's no, if there's no sun, grass isn't going to grow there. It just won't happen. Cool. 
I like the idea of, of cutting in something. I, I do a nice, just well-defined edge. And then I do uh, cedar chips or any kind of chips that I get from my local arborist. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing. Uh, yeah. The second part of this question is we have also tried some gardening in the backyard, south facing and varying degrees of success. Lots of trees again, causing shade throughout the day, uh, which, uh, which veggies uh, or which several veggies, peas and beans, he says, don't seem to enjoy any recommendation for shade friendly veggies. And we'll start you with just a, a couple of good ideas. Um, you can think shade and cold weather crops. So lettuces really enjoy the shade. Oftentimes they're co-planted co best behind something that uh, needs to climb a trellis because they'll get that nice dappled light. So shade does the same effect. So this is lettuces, kale, um, sorrel, uh, shard. Um, you, the same can certainly be said for a lot of herbs. In particular, I have had great success in shaded area. I grow cilantro underneath the shade of a maple tree. And now is the time to be sowing that into some um, loose soil directly because it also likes the cold and it has, it benefits from this uh, cooler time, not necessarily frost, but to actually kickstart the seed. Some seeds are crazy like that. Like if you ever start lavender from seed, you're supposed to put it in your fridge, usually for a month at the end of winter for a month, 40 days, and then sow it because the cold actually activates the seed in some way. Cilantro can be like that too. So a couple of decent suggestions for you. And always zucchini, because it seems like in this area, <laughs> zucchini is a miracle and it can grow almost anywhere in almost any kind of condition. So get yourself a zucchini plant. If you kill that, well, you're not going to kill it. So if that's the same Ben Jaworski we went to high school with, thank you so much for finding that's us awesome. on YouTube. We hope you're doing well. Hi, and. Uh, have a good life. Thanks for watching. So on to everybody else. Hello to for sure. Jason's family members who watch us. And um, hello to my family members and the 100 other people <laughs> who tune in. Our topic today is tools. Uh, this was a fun one that we thought, hmm, what are we going to do as, as the time rolls on? It's a practical thing, and we're not going to ramble too much. So would you like to begin, Jason? Sure. I mean, I, I, this isn't going to surprise anybody for tool one, but obviously the thing that you have to have for lawn care is a lawn mower. You can't do this without it. Um, now, whether that is a manual reel, like what Chris uses, and you push that around, that's a very cheap entry. Uh, you can feel special. You can cut your grass shorter than you can with a rotary mower, uh, but it is a lot of work from a, a, a cardio perspective. And usually those things are pretty small. So if your yard is larger, it's going to take you weeks, months, years to just cut it one time. Um, I think, I think when it comes to mo Yeah. What's that? I think mine's 18 inches wide, speaking of. Yeah. yeah. Right, or your typical like rotary mower that you're gonna get the Honda Toro yard machines, lawn boy, whatever other brand, Husqvarna, whatever else is out there are all about 21 inches. And I think that's maybe the thing that some people don't think about is you go to the store, you buy the one lawnmower that's there. Um, but I think there's something to be said in if you're going to really get into lawn care, you need to like it. If you hate it, you're just never going to have a nice yard because you're, you're going to you're going to put off everything that you need to do because you don't like it. So consider the type of property that you have. Is it really hilly? If it's, you know, really undulating and hilly and it's going to make you uncomfortable to sit on a riding lawnmower, don't get a riding lawnmower. Get you know, something, you know, the Toro makes a time, it's called the time master, which is 30 inches as opposed to 21. Oh. Um, so you can get a little bit bigger lawnmower that's going to cut down on that time for you, allow you to get the, out there mow more often. Mm -hmm. um, maybe it's a zero turn, maybe whatever it is, make sure you tailor the lawnmower you have to what you want to do. Either I want to sit, drink a beer, mow my lawn on, a, on, the, on the John Deere, or I want to get the exercise and walk and, you know, do it that way. But kind of think through what are you dealing with and then making sure that it's something that you're going to enjoy doing, or at least not hate. Very nice. I'm going to start off with my first tool um, that also has wheels. And it's one of the things that I didn't bring down here. Uh, it's a wheelbarrow. It is a huge thing that I think people often don't think of when it comes to tools, right? A tool is something you can hold in your hand and, and, and do some action with. A okay. wheelbarrow just doesn't feel like that necessarily, but I would be lost without my wheelbarrow. I've got a great big one with a nice 
uh, inflatable tire, big one in the, in the front, huge low capacity. It's a nice thick plastic, which I'm grateful for because I use my shovel in there and I just go to town. I use it for all sorts of mixing and it's, it's with me whenever I'm doing a good garden activity. Like yesterday, I decided I was going to transplant my Egyptian walking onions and my Jerusalem artichokes from the location where they were into a totally different spot. So how do I go about doing that without making a complete mess? Because I've got raised beds in particular. I went to the place where I was going to be plant transplanting them, dug the area that I wanted to do. And where does that soil go? It goes right into my wheelbarrow. Then I go over to the onions, pull them out with my shovel, walk the shovel full, old, scoop it in there you know, fill that whole space, mix up my soil, and then I put it back in. And that wheelbarrow is just so useful in times like that. And it's great for any kind of um, giant cleanup as well. Every time I'm, you know, ripping out vines or, or if I'm doing like a de-weeding kind of situation, put it in there. I just went through and uh, picked up all of the sticks in our side yard with my daughter earlier this week, and we filled up the wheelbarrow. It has so many uses. It's like, it's the uh, the hidden gem of the garden tools. So I, I wouldn't go with metal because I think they get too hot. I keep mine outside most of the time as well. And I do, wouldn't want to be scratching metal with my shovel. My daughter likes to ride in it when it's empty too. Don't want to sit her in metal. And it's not a cheap, thin plastic one either with plastic handles or anything because cheap, thin plastic will break with too much solar radiation exposure. It just gets really rigid. Um, so don't skimp out pay for the good wheelbarrow with nice wooden handles and thick plastic that you buy it once and you don't have to buy it again. Yeah, I will absolutely echo the the wheelbarrow. One thing even to for lawn care as well, because you know, you're going to be doing projects where you have a low spot, or you need to get soil somewhere, you need a little hole, you need to, you know, whatever. Sand for me, like I'm going to be doing a lot of sand leveling just because that's fun, not because it's something you that are you know, these big composite like six or ten cubic foot uh pull behind carts you can hook them up to an atv if you have one or hook them up to your lawn tractor or whatever those things are pretty sweet as well i hadn't thought about that but that's wheelbarrow is important wheelbarrow is very important cool thanks how about you what, what are, what's your tool number two probably oh, next oh, oh. i'm gonna see sorry go ahead no, I was going to say, or are you deciding that wheelbarrow was tool number two for you? No. That can be 1A. Okay, 1A, good. Um, no, I think the other thing that is probably something that you have to have <clears throat> is a string trimmer of some kind, hmm. whatever it might be. And I, and I didn't get to this with the lawnmower thing too, but battery is really starting to become viable for lawnmowers as well, battery-powered tools. Um, I have the DeWalt line for like string trimmer, blower, Huh. Um, that type of thing, but string trimmer is going to be necessary because no lawnmower, no matter what you're doing is going to get right up against your house, right up against your fence, right up against your garage, you, whatever it might be. And you're going to need something like that to maintain it. Um, I can't speak. I've never had a gas powered, like two cycle, four cycle, um, string trimmer, echo really? steel, anything like that. Wow. Um, I've only ever had like the really cheap hook it to an end of an extension cord. Uh, string trimmer and then I got this uh, DeWalt one that I have now that I that I'm a big fan of but one thing is that can kind of serve multi-purpose as well to do your edging and stuff around the driveway as well which that probably would be my my next tool when we get there but yeah get something that's that's going to be big enough strong enough if you have a small yard you don't hate carrying a extension cord around to do deal with that stuff the cheap ones you get one for like 40 50 bucks clean up along your houses, landscaping beds, trees, poles, et cetera. Definitely those are gonna be the two things. You need to keep everything mowed down or it's gonna look silly. That's interesting. Do you subscribe to consumer reports? Like does it- I do not. My father-in-law for Christmas got me a subscription. So every month we get one in the mail and this month it is, uh, it's all yard equipment and, and tools, interestingly enough. And I haven't Makes opened sense. it. It came, it came, yeah, right, great timing for them. Uh, it came in the mail maybe two days ago, haven't gone through it, but it was a nice picture on the cover. And I think even in the title or in the early pages, they talk a lot about battery powered things. And then in our family text chain, I think my oldest sister-in-law was talking about uh, battery powered tools becoming more prominent. So it's so timely that you make that comment too. something that I will 
hopefully, you know, potentially look into in the future. Cool. Good comment. Yeah. And I only have the 20 volt tool line. So then it, then it also interfaces with my like drills and stuff. Yeah. Drills and uh, reciprocating saw and all that stuff is all the same battery. Um, I know when you get into like Toro and steel and ego, and I think even DeWalt has a 40 volt. And then there are some companies that have 60 volt as well. And that stuff's starting to get really serious in terms of, you know, even some commercial folk are using those types of, right. of equipment. You just got to get a big enough battery. Cause if you can, it, I made this mistake, actually learn from me. I uh, had DeWalt drills and I had the little two amp hour battery that comes with the drills. Oh, wow. And I, and I was going to be smart. I was going to save myself $70 and get the tool only. Cause I have this battery. And I started using it with a little tiny battery using the string trimmer and it made it, I don't know, 10 minutes <laughs> before it just ate through that little baby battery. So then I, instead of, I saved $70 to then buy a $100 uh, proper battery. So don't do that, get a bigger one. Um, but otherwise then they're all interchangeable. And I think that's kind of slick. Pick pick a line first. I know Toro does, does really well with blowers, trimmers, all that stuff. Ego is pretty highly reviewed. Ryobi's okay. I like the DeWalt stuff I have. Pick a line that you like and stick with that. And then you can start to save quite a bit of money on on batteries because they're all the same and interchangeable. Yeah, once you're in that ecosystem, you got to stick with it. Like that's what I did for my power tools too. I was all Hitachi before Hitachi rebranded to Metabo. Um, but those 60 watt ones, that's like a Tim Allen oh, 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 tool time kind of big power thing. Yeah, that's starting to become really the real deal. So mine has no power for tool number two. <sighs> But this is my um, also must have if you if you're just starting out gardening, and you don't want any tools, the first thing you need to buy is a proper spade. Um, this actually came to me four gardening seasons ago. Prior to that, I had been working with one of my grandfather's shovels. It was like a legacy shovel. I don't know how long he had it. Like I'm sure it wasn't an heirloom. It was a it was a wooden shaft um, with a nice metal bottom, much softer than this. But I am a I am a large man. I'm I am 200 pounds. I'm six foot five, and you know I am an aggressive stepper. And I busted that thing, and I felt really bad about it for a while. <laughs> and then as I'm going out to the store to replace it, um, speaking of buying brands, I I am all invested in Fiskars. I think it is the top brand for yard care, and they have a fantastic lifetime warranty and everything. So I try to buy as much Fiskars as I can. I came across the shovel, and I think it was really affordable. Maybe. 30 or 35 dollars and you can find shovels a lot cheaper don't get me wrong but it's it's a unibody structure so this is metal with a nice rubber grip on the top and then it just goes seamlessly into this like mold it's not even a weld on there it's just completely molded in so it's one great big thing and i have abused the heck out of this and i leave it sitting outside all season i only put it in for the winter when i'm not using it um i i specifically wanted two tools in my garden that I didn't have to keep going back and forth to the garage or to the shed for because I use them for almost everything you know you can use just a shovel if you don't have a troll or something little to to get that space if you don't have a hoe you can drag this back etc cetera, etc cetera. so you can be versatile if you're being cheap or you're just starting out but a really good shovel is the way to go I don't know where I'd be without this I love it I think the one, I think I have a lot of the razor, razor back, razor something. Sure. sure. I think the shovels and rakes that I have are all razor back because it's like the one of the two brands at Home Depot that are not the cheapest ones. Cool. Yeah. Our closest Home Depot is up in uh, Appleton. So I'm about a 25, 30 minute drive away from here once you get on the highway. Yeah. And what's Oshkosh got? Lowe's? We have a Lowe's and a Menards and a Fleet Farm. Oh, I forget. I always forget about Fleet Farm. That's just sure. not, you get the farm and fleet down here. Well, that's the thing. It, it's well for lawn care. I feel like Fleet Farm would be a great thing, or or Fleet and Farm, uh, because you've got your really big uh, bulk seeds. You've got your greens. I think of like bird feeding and flannel and things to do with your dog. Construction grade lumber, <laughs> um, toy land. Uh, Fleet Farm is a great resource. I don't necessarily think of them. They're not first to mind when it comes to buying uh, power tools necessarily, but you know, your shovels and stuff for yard care. Oh yeah, yeah. for sure. So that's cool. All right. So next to me. Yeah, you're on for number three. So I think with lawn care, we're already into vanity purchases. Really, if you're going to take care of the, oh, okay, no, I lied. We, we have one more that I think is necessary. And that is a, a granular fertilizer spreader. Oh, okay. 
get whatever you can, whatever it might be. If it's the cheapest available little tiny, I don't know, they're like 20, 30 pound capacity Scott spreaders. Good chance that's going to be, or a hand one. Yes. Hand one's fine too. I wouldn't really recommend that, but if your yard is really small and you are fine taking a little bit of extra time, that'll work as well. Um, but even just the little push Scott's granular spreader with the little fan disc on the bottom, the impeller, um, broadcast. I don't typically recommend drop spreaders for fertilizing because then now that's really going to require a level of accuracy in your paths back and forth. Because if you're using a drop spreader, it's just putting fertilizer straight down. So if you don't overlap, you're going to start to get um, like striping where you had fertilizer, you'll have the green stripe. And then if you missed a little bit, you'll have like a an off green kind of color and you'll get that striping. So I don't necessarily recommend a drop spreader, but if that's all you have, that will work. Um, but I'll recommend broadcast for, and then you can just use exclusively granular fertilizers. You don't need to get into liquids, anything like that. Um, go back and forth. Basically it's, it's recommended where you throw for, for a good even coverage, you throw fertilizer, you walk it, watch it come out and come off the impeller and you throw back to the previous stripes, uh, the previous passes wheels. So you do that all the way around, do a little trim pass of the whole yard, then go back and forth, throwing fertilizer back to your last wheel tracks and you'll be good to go. But I think those are the, the three necessary lawn care products, lawn mower, string trimmer, granular fertilizer spreader. Beautiful. Well, my next one I, I wore as a prop before I get to it. I, um, I got this shirt when I was in high school, probably from Spencer Gifts. It's uh, it, it would get me canceled today, but it says... <laughs> gardeners do it with hose and it's got a picture of a, a gardener as you can see the yellow is very well warm <laughs> my next item is a hoe so <laughs> this this was a so good stupid. transition whether you like it or not now i got this tool <laughs> thanks jason uh, at the same time as i got this and purely because they were sitting right next to each other and i use a, a, a tool like this in some fashion all the time as a large shafted tool like that. This one I'm going to be replacing this year. It's not a unibody and this weld up here has come undone and I don't even have a neighbor that can fix this. So I'm going to be donating this because I don't need this spinning around on me like a fan. But what I do like about this kind of tool, uh, this one was attractive to me because it's got a nice flat hole head and it had this, um, you see this kind of shape in de-weeding, or if you're like de-rooting, going deep into a bed, you need to break it up. That's really efficient. And I also like that it had this, uh, what, nine inch spread, eight inch spread here. Oftentimes when I'm just like leveling out a surface or whatever, I would have, lay it down like this. So this is great for, you know, I'm planting potatoes, go on in, dig a nice deep row, put some compost and soil on the top, spread it right out with this. Go, 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 go. If, if I'm in my pre-raised bed days, um, I'm still working right in the soil after tilling and I'm breaking up any kind of clumps, break, break, break. If I got a whole bunch of dandelions, I'm getting rid of, pull them out like this. Super, super efficient. Um, you know, if you got some grackles in your yard, you need to get rid of, you, know, you can just knock them out of the sky. That's, a, that's just a bad joke. We don't have any grackles in our yard, but um, a whole. Wonderful. So I'm going to probably go to my uh, nearest retailer that carries good Fiskars products and see what they have that is an equivalent, but an upgrade from this that I'll be getting myself later. Um, otherwise, I'll have to hunt for it online. It's really very versatile, you know, and, and you, if you don't have this, of course, you can be dragging soil with a tip of your spade, like I said, but this just has that more efficient shape, you know, right tool for the right job situation. A hoe. I guess this one can also serve as a rake in some way. I don't use a rake as often as I do with everything else. That's a good tool, but if we're picking top fives, I'm not putting a rake in there. Yeah. Yeah, I think the next, the next one for me is going to be um, some sort of tank sprayer. What's that? So basic and, and you can use a hose end sprayer as well so you're going to go to your local you know generic hardware store and in the lawn care section there is going to be um something that you're going to screw onto the end of your hose and you put product in a in a oh. tank connected to to the thing that screws onto your hose there's a little straw that goes down into that tank and it's going to pull product out some of them they do have dials for application rates 
but they are very, they're not accurate pieces of machinery. It costs $10. It's not a precision implement. And herbicides in some products do require a certain level of, of accuracy in your application rate because it's, it's higher concentration, smaller application rates. You need to be a little bit more accurate. Um, I use it for liquid fertilizers because they're, they're like liquid fertilizer and soil conditioning. I use the hose end sprayer um, because it's easier, it's faster. And I, I find it, yeah, it's just faster. Um, but what I think would, I would get over that if I could only choose one is a tank sprayer. And now they make a lot of different ones all the way from a single gallon with a little pump on top and you pump it away and it's got a little wand with a fan tip on it. And that's going to be what I would recommend primarily for dealing with weeds is a, is a tank sprayer. Um, there are granular weed controls, but they require a very specific set of circumstances to work. Um, say Scott's weed and feed for is probably going to be the one that people recognize most. Um, you have to put that down when the grass is wet, because basically it needs to kind of break up that granule granule when it touches the wet grass. And then that's going to release the herbicide and hopefully attach itself to the weeds. I don't love that. I think you get much, much more success with liquid herbicides, weed killers. Um, you read the label, see the application rate that they recommend on there pour that amount of product into your one gallon tank sprayer and go and just walk around. And every time you see a weed, you just spray a little bit on there and you can go anywhere from, I think the, the home Depot special two gallon was like $12. Wouldn't recommend that. There was a Scott's uh, branded two gallon. That was $20. That's what I'd recommend you start. If you have a bigger yard, um, the four gallon ones that you wear ghostbuster style with the backpack that you pump with your arms, that you're going to find out real quick how soft and fragile your upper body is. <laughs> so then on top of that, um, you can go into Ryobi is probably the cheapest entry. Uh, Ryobi, Field King, Chapin, Solo, all have $150 battery powered backpack sprayer, which if you can afford it, I would absolutely recommend that because it's going to make your life much easier. It's amazing what those backpack products are like. I've never done a backpack sprayer, but I have a backpack blower for leaves and snow. And I suppose you could use that, of course, for grass too, if you're, if you're cutting and, and cleaning up. Uh, that was the house yep. from, from one of my grandfathers. And it has gotten so much use for, for me in the fall and in the winter. We get a light dusting and that's what I do. I don't shovel. But that's clearly a, a tangent. But yeah, those backpack products, they sure make you feel cool and they get the job done. Slick, dude. Yep. All right. My next one, I'm going to call it a combo set. This was a gift to me from uh, Aunt Lynn and Uncle Jerry just a couple of years ago. I think I, I just started using it last garden season, but the tools in it are, are what is important. So this is just a, a leather strap that ties onto my uh, belt and inside is a pruning shears and a small little spade. And this one is, is so, so darn useful. I, I call it a garden knife. You'll also hear this called. This has a serrated edge. So that's good if you run into some roots, you need to cut things up or you got hard soil, whatever. A nice fine tip. This particular one also has markings up to six inches. So say you're transplanting a seedling and you need to get down four inches at least, or you need a certain depth for whatever you're going. Uh, this is a quick um, indicator for you. You don't wanna poke yourself in the eye. I probably shouldn't be you know, flailing it around like this, but um, they are uh, very comfortable tools. If you don't find a set like this, I would say the three that you want to get are um, some version of a spade, whether it's a garden knife or something a little bit wider, right? Um, uh, pruning shears. This one is um, nice and sharp, standard. Um, this isn't anything that's going to be huge for, you know, trimming branches down, but this is great if you're uh, trimming up your raspberries or you're uh, pruning your tomatoes or uh, anything actually in a garden, even, you know, cutting flowers. This, this is what you're going to be wanting, a nice, nice medium density. And then the third thing would be some sort of a hand rake, you know, whether it's got just a straight old flat hoe end or a three prong, you can get the job done. Again, I use this planting potatoes because I'm going to be doing that in a little bit. You just dig your row with your hand, bada bing, bada boom. So they are a good set. And you know, this is anecdote time. 
um, this is supposed to go in a certain way. There's a nice metal lining on the inside here. And of course, the very first time that I did it, I did it backwards. So this lip uh, came out and it put a centimeter long cut right here. Let's see, can we see it on camera? See, do you see that laceration right well. above my nail? Wah, wah, the very first time I used it and I had, I said some words to myself, but the overall integrity of this is definitely still there. And boy, oh boy, every time I go out in the garden, it's like, grab my gardening hat and grab this and go. So it's the smaller version of the big tools, essentially. You know what I mean? Okay. You can't, you can't go wrong. Yeah. So I think if we're, if we're back to me, we are back to you. I think the last thing, and it's not glamorous, it's not very fun. It's actually my least favorite task, uh, but you need to have a leaf rake of some kind. Hmm. whatever leaf rake it is. If it's the big uh, fanned out plastic ones that are maybe a little bit more aggressive or the little metal metal tine guys, or you can, there's much more specialized and expensive. There's like groundskeeper rake, which is just a more aggressive version of the metal ones. You need some sort of rake and it's two, two activities you need it for that are both some of the most important. The first is spring um, when everything is waking up, especially if you live in a climate with snow, um, one of the most important things you can do in the spring is get out there. The snow will have packed everything down on top of itself and it'll lay matted. It's a great environment for disease to grow um, and cause problems. It also prevents the sun from getting to the soil and warming it up. So if it's matted down, it's not going to wake up as fast because the soil isn't warming up. Um, it's not getting the, the sun exposure to the leaf because it's all laid over on itself. So you need to get out there and rake just your matted down areas not to remove thatch, not to do anything like that. Just go out there and fluff everything up with the rake. And then in the fall, you need to get leaves off the yard. Now you can do that with a lawnmower with a bag on it. It's what I do. I hate raking, so I find that much easier. Um, but in some of the harder to reach places, or if you just have a little area where you need to get some leaves off, um, trees are dropping leaves to smother out basically all of the competing foliage. And that includes grass. So if you leave your leaves on the ground over winter, they're going to block out the sun from the grass when the snow melts. Um, and it will either at, at worst green up lower or excuse me, at best green up slower and at worst just be dead. So you got to get the, the grass raked up in the spring and you got to get the leaves raked up in the fall. Very cool. And I appreciate that you use greening up twice. That is a term that I love. <laughs> I have to go get a prop for my final one. All right. Well, I have several props. This is my old one, actually. I haven't worn this in a while. This is usually what I leave for uh, guests in the yard. My number five is a whole ecosystem of PPE, your protective gear when you're out in the garden. Um, for me, it always starts with a hat. I fell in love with a wide brim star, a straw hat, to be honest, with the uh, series finale of Star Trek, The Next Generation. Captain Picard's family owns a vineyard in France. And he's out uh, tending to the vines. Well, you got me right there. And this beautiful <laughs> old man is wearing a nice wide brimmed hat. And I'm like, hmm, A, that's nerd cool. B, that's really practical. I got to get me one of them one of the days. Oh, that's, that's out of sentence. But I did. This, <laughs> this is my early one. So it's great. Um, depending on what you're doing in the garden, you should definitely have a good set of gloves. I would say try a couple of them and find one that you like. There's nothing quite like, you know, <laughs> going through uh, a nice thorny area uh, with some of these and just going to town. Or if you're de-weeding, you're picking out like thistle or nettles and things that have those tiny little prickers and you're protected and you don't get poked through. I happen to like these ones that have like a neoprene bottom to them with a mesh on top. They allow that to be both breathable to my hand, but protective at the same time. And they're awfully durable unless you're being aggressive with them. I'll get, you know, three solid gardening seasons out of these before I put, put holes in them. And at that point, it's time to move on. I didn't bring my boots down. I have a pair, they're called sloggers. I found them from another gardening channel. They're essentially a, a neoprene shoe, clogs, or not clogs, crocs would probably be good too, but something you can slide on and feel comfortable to get in the mud if that's your situation. But then my overalls, 
and I could have put these on for you, but I didn't. But by God, I love these. These are, uh, they're discontinued now, but these were made by uh, Duluth Trading Company. And this is their fire hose or fire, fire hose, fireman. Ah, oh, shoot. Well, fire is something or another um, overalls. And it's a real thick canvas. So when I'm spending a day in the garden or just doing some good gardening or yard work, I want to get down in the ground and I want to be in the mud and the grass and the things that stain you and not feel like I need to be worrying about my clothing. And this is this dedicated item that is, it is of the earth. You know what I mean? Yep. And I never feel guilty. It's like a mark of pride every time I stain this with raspberries or something or another. Um, and it, it just holds up and it's got a million and a half pockets. And then the bottom of each of these are little bits of dirt and seeds and everything else and a pen apparently. And it, it is so functional. And I wear this up at a fire pit, just everywhere you go. I even went camping with our buddy, Sean Lynch. Do you remember him from high school? I do. And uh, I wore these the whole weekend. It was very hot. It wasn't necessarily the best attire, but it was mosquito season. And did I get bit? Not that I could feel. And I was the only guy protected that well. So overalls, man, are they great. And yes, you may uh, look and feel like a farmer, but gosh, that's a good feeling. That's exactly. a good feeling. So protective equipment, your PPE. I'm always wearing something that is uh, UV color, uh, covering. I'm very fair. I'm, I'm blonde, very white, blue eyes, fair skin. You know, I want to be protecting myself preventatively for any kind of skin cancer. So I'll, I'll, I also wear long sleeves almost exclusively in the summertime. But that technology has come so far in the last 10 years, too. We've got these shirts that have, you know, they're marketed as built in um, USB 50, not USB. <laughs> um, SPF. Uh, thank you. <laughs> I just, um got got tech on my mind i guess i did <laughs> i bought a computer yesterday so um spf 50 built into yeah. and now i see these things from um uh, farmers uh supply stores that are like actual just sleeves like if you're wearing a short sleeve shirt you can just buy a sleeve effectively that you pull up and it's got the uvb in it yeah. uvb yeah uv blocking that's what i was trying to go for uvb is very close to uh, usb but SPF, anyways, it's got the three letter 50 in it or a neck, kind of like a neck gaiter. That's really helpful. My long sleeve things will oftentimes have a hood on them and I'll hood up before I put the hat and they're so breathable. And of course I've got sunscreen on my face too, but it's all to be protected and then just go to town in the garden. Those are tools, uh, that's tools, that's technology, you know? I've started to get, I've started to get a little bit more uh, sunscreen aware at least just because I grew up playing golf and so I, and I was not very smart and you just, I burned once and then I never had to sunscreen again and I was always fine. And that's not smart. So trying to be a little bit more intentional about that. Plus two, when the hair goes away, like this burns so quickly Ouch. and that's miserable. So uh -huh. yeah, I like the, the PPE idea. Also, if you are spraying herbicides or fertilizers from a tank sprayer, gloves, long sleeves, long pants. Yeah. Cool. So I'm glad that you brought that up. Yeah, I have a thought afterwards too, right? I think yes. To remember. Yes. Seems stupid. I, but, yeah. <laughs> um, honorable mention, rapid fire bonus round. Okay, go. Um, a stick edger because your edges got to be crisp. That absolutely accents a nice looking lawn. Is a crisp edge along your driveway. Cool, dude. Uh, right? uh, oh, I didn't prepare. Um, <laughs> I think I said. I think I said rake, uh, like a good garden wake. I'm talking like metal tines that go down. That can be very helpful. Um, or a, a watering can of your choice. Uh, I don't use a, a hose. I don't have anything that gets to me, but I've got a nice good watering can. So, Yep. Hoses and sprinklers are going to be something that you need. It can be anything, but you're going to need at least one of those. Yeah, bada bing, bada boom. Tools. Hey, this was a good conversation, Jason. I really enjoyed it. And it got me thinking about those battery powered things. So I know I'm going to be reading the uh, issue of consumer reports before the next time we talk. Um, so that'll be food for thought this spring. Can't wait to see what's actually out in the market. Yeah. And, and if you really think about it, you know, and some, some of the other lawn care channels that have been fortunate enough to have tools provided to them to review. Um, one thing that kind of always comes up as a joke is, you know, you have, and especially for me now, I have lawnmower, lawnmower lawnmower, tiller snowblower, 
So on an annual basis, I'm doing five oil changes, five spark plug changes, five, you know, air filter changes, all of that. You know, you, you want to get your battery powered lawnmower ready for winter. And it's just a clip of them pulling the battery out of the lawnmower. <laughs> and, and you want to get your, your lawnmower ready for spring. And it's just them putting the battery back in the lawnmower. And it's like, and, and it's so simple. And I, I've, I feel like if I had, you know, gas powered trimmers and blowers and all that stuff, I would just find it so irritating to have to maintain that when I can just throw a battery in the trimmer. And then when I'm done trimming, I throw a battery in the, the blower and I go blow off and it's so simple. So yeah, I would definitely recommend it if, if you have small enough work that a battery will do it for you. Cool, that's right, gotta assess your situation and go. Well, loyal viewers who stuck with us this far, uh, thank you so much. Be sure to let us know in the comments below what you want us to talk about or leave other comments because you know we're going to read them on air and we're going to discuss them. So special thanks to Ben Jaworski, the sponsor of this episode. Absolutely. Uh, until next time, friends, uh, we'll see you. Be sure to subscribe to either of our channels if you're interested in more. And happy gardening. Happy lawn. <laughs>